sa kanayunan po, kilala po akong amihan, uh, Che. Dun, che din po yung isa kong koda. And this will be my first time to take off my mask in public. So, ako po si Joy James Sagino. Uh, Na-recruit po ako bilang member ng League of Filipino Students sa UP, uh, sa Iloilo City Campus, way back in 2007. Ang um, issue that time, Mr. Chair, was uh, 2007 was the first year of implementation of the tuition fee increase in UP and the revitalized uh, socialized tuition fee and assistance program or the SPFAP. So dahil po sa issue na yun, uh, syempre sa part ko din na galing sa mahirap na pamilya, eh sumuporta dun sa panawagan ng LFS at saka ng ibang progressive organizations na tutulan yung pagtaas ng matrikula sa University of the Philippines. Uh, after three months po of being a member of LFS, eh, naimbitahan ako sa isang sikretong pagpupulong. It was held sa likod ng auditorium ng UP Visaya sa Iloilo City. And yun na pala yung orientation at saka recruitment sa akin para maging member ng Kabataang Makabayan. I still remember the person who recruited me. It is the very person who personally attacked um, Mr. Jeffrey Salis. Uh, the person who recruited me sa uh, Kabataang Makabayan is Lian Porquilla, uh, the son of the late uh, Jory Porquilla, uh, a leader then ng, ng mass movement sa isla ng Panay. So when I was recruited po sa KM a year after, um, I've been active as the city spokesperson of the League of Filipino Students, chairperson din po ng LFS sa UP Iloilo City. Tumakbo rin bilang um, of officer ng student council sa college management sa UP Visaya CM sa city campus and naging kabahag rin ng National Union of Students of the Philippines kung saan yung pinanggaling ng organization ni Congressman uh, Sara Ilago. After a year, Mr. Chair, um, na programa akong pumasok sa isang uh, guerrilla front ng NPA sa Southern Front na kumikilo sa mga bayan ng Igbaras, and, um, Miyagaw, um, San Joaquin, somewhere in the Southern Mountain Range of Panay Island. I stayed there for three months. And then paglabas ko, uh, yun na yung naging program sa akin. I was um, invited to become a candidate member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. I was given an orientation. I was also given yung tinatawag kanina ni Mr. Jeffrey Salis na basic party course. Uh, included uh, some Marxist, Leninist, and Maoist uh, inputs on the revolution of Europe, Russia, and China, etc. And that in 2010, uh, as a cadre of the Communist Party unit sa youth and students uh, sector sa Iloilo uh, para po sa tugunan yung pangangailangan for the electoral campaign as a Communist Party cadre I was assigned as the spokesperson of an Akwawis party list and particularly deployed to the province of Antique to become the electoral coordinator of an Akwawis and Nakabayan coalition dun sa, sa Antique para po um, mangampanya at uh, saka mamanage yung mga watchers ng Makabayan doon sa probinsya ng uh, Antique. And then after the election, I was deployed to the regional party group. Yung sinasabi kanina ni, ni Ka Eric, ni La Canuel, na party group. Uh, ako po'y na-deploy sa isang regional party group directly under the regional YS Bureau of the Re Regional Urban Party Committee ng Iloilo para mamuno sa anak bayan. And thereafter, I was assigned and elected as the regional spokesperson and the regional um, chairman of anak bayan for the entire Panay Island that was in 2009 until some time in the mid of 2010. And then I became a controversial uh, personality uh, during the um, city council session of the Iloilo City when I was arrested. Um, when we were having a protest, silent protest, inside the session hall of Iloilo City, that was, I believe, October of 2010, dahil rin sa takot na naging sentro ng atensyon ng buong syadad ng Iloilo, I decided and asked sa mga higher organ namin sa organization na maglailaw ako. So instead of uh, at maglailaw at umuwi muna sa amin sa Zamboanga, or kung saan po yung probinsya namin, instead of lilowing, um, I was offered to be redeployed kasi nangangailangan yung buong rehiyon ng Tambuanga ng isang kadre para pamunuan yung recovery 
ng WMRPC, the Western Mindanao Regional Party Committee, particular sa siyudad ng Sambuanga at sa ilang bahagi ng Sambuanga Sibugay. So in the, uh, December of 2010 until um, 2011, I was the Anakbayan Regional Coordinator of the entire Sambuanga Peninsula. I was able to attend the National Assembly and National Council meeting of Anakbayan sometimes in May 2011 and I was elected as the National Vice Chairperson for the entire Mindanao of the Anakbayan National Executive Council. And after that, Mr. Chair, uh, December, I was invited na dumalo sa isang intermediate party course, isang pag-aaral ng partido sa isang uh, in the hinterlands of Davao region, uh, particularly Sitio Cogonon, uh, Barangay Salvacion, Trento, Agusan del Sur, at uh, after ng pag-aaral, um, I decided to become a full-time NPA thereafter. And hindi rin matagal yung promotion at saka yung pagtaas ng aking posisyon, I became a party, uh, political guide ng isang squad ng NPA, kalaunan naging political instructor, naging political officer, and in 2016, I became the front secretary of the Guerrilla Front 20 at the same time, a deputy secretary of the sub-regional committee uh, under the SMRC. So nung nasa NPA po kami, um, hindi pa rin hiwala yung mga gawain namin. Um, we have a sub-regional urban committee kung saan sila yung nagiging legal uh, organizers namin for the peasant. So yung mukha nila ay mga KMP organizers. We also have a committee for YS. We have Anakbayan, particular Anakbayan, Compostela Valley. And during election, kami talaga sa guerrilla front yung uh, nagpapatawag ng mga susing mga personality sa loob mismo ng guerrilla front sa kampo ng NPA para pag-usapan ano yung magiging role ng mga guerrilla front ng NPA sa panahon ng eleksyon. And there was indeed a time in 2016 nung tumatakbo si President Duterte, uh, hindi naman uh, ikakailan ng lahat na the entire revolutionary movement were supporting the President uh, Duterte in his uh, candidacy for the President. And NPA mismo po, kami mismo yung pumupunta sa mga barrio sa mga guerrilla base namin para ikampanya si President Duterte, ikampanya yung Bayan Muna, ikampanya yung Anak Pawis, and Kapataan Party List, party list uh, etc. So, yung sinasabi nilang red tagging, ako minsan natatawa na lang po, uh, Mr. Chair, kasi uh, para sa akin po, hindi po siya red tagging. Kasi ako po, um, as my first time revealing my my true identity sa, pu sa public, especially here in the Senate inquiry ng ating Senate of the Philippines, uh, I really, really testify um, na there is no such thing as red tagging. Um, kami sa Anak Bayan, uh, the regional party group na namumuno sa Anak Bayan, a regional party group is a party group being, uh, of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Kami talaga yung uh, namumuno at saka nangihikayat sa mga estudyante. May program yan, uh, first immersion sa mga peasant communities, immersion sa mga urban poor and worker communities until the time na makakapag-decide yung mga members namin na sumampa sa New People's Army. Gaya ko na na-program din at saka dumating sa point na nag-decide ako before na sumampa sa New People's Army. And... These party list uh, groups na tumatakbo sa under the Makabayan Coalition ay mga party list groups talaga na we are leading. Even the regional party committees ng SMRC and all other regional party committees all over the Philippines down to its NPA units have very crucial role in campaigning, in implementing solid votes, solid um Command votes. Command votes, ibig sabihin, all members of the underground mass organizations, members of PKM, members of Makibaka, members of Gabataan Makabayan na nasa loob ng guerrilla base, they are manda it's mandatory for them to vote for these uh, party list organizations na tumatakbo sa uh, Congress, Mr. Chair. Paano ka nagbalik loob? Anong nagbunsod sa iyo para magbalik loob sa gobyerno? Um, umalis po ako sa pagka NPA Mr. Chair in 2017. Uh, some, if I remember it correctly, it was September 2017. Um, it was a complicated situation kasi before that, uh, yun yung simula ng pagde-declare ng martial law sa, Min uh, sa Mindanao. Um, dahil sa uh, 
kahirapan. Nahi, na, nagkakaroon ng kahirapan sa loob ng NPA unit. Wala kaming gawain. So I uh, I witness a lot of of things na na opposed doon sa personal ko na prinsipyo. For example, yung nagkakwento ni Kashin about uh, violence against women, rape against women, eh, isa rin ako sa naging sakse doon sa exploitation, sexual opportunism ng aming mga commanders uh, sa loob ng aking guerrilla front mismo na may mga commanders, platoon leaders taking advantage of this new women recruits, mga kabataang babae na lumad na nare-recruit namin na one, two, or three months pa lang, kahit may mga asawa sila, ay they really are speak face na na um, ligawan, ang iba naman talagang ginagapang. So, yung mga bagay na hindi ko talaga makain, na nare-realize ko na we are, we, we have that stress, stress ocho na tinatawag. Isa dyan, yeah, stress ocho, Mr. Chair, yun yung um, policy of discipline ng NPA na Nagsasabi isa doon, uh, huwag pagsamantalahan yung kababaihan. But ang nangyayari talaga sa loob ng kilusan, yung, yung policy na yan is just a paper policy. What really ha- is happening inside the movement, these commanders, these platoon leaders, these NPA com- uh, cadres are sexual. Uh, most of them are sexual opportunists. They take advantage of this new recruits ng mga babae na kahit may mga asawa sila ay pinagsasamantalahan yung mga kagabi, kababaihan. There were, uh, I believe that was in May 2017 to June, na imbes na pag-usapan sa loob ng, ng, ng committee namin, ay papano harapin ng NPA, unit namin, yung martial law ng pamahalaan, ay yung parating na pag-uusapan namin sa araw-araw na meeting namin, ay mga violation, mga violation, mga paglabag dun sa palisiyan ng NPA na pagsasamantala sa kababaihan. And it is being tolerated na imbes na uh, sam- uh, bigyan ng ng karampatang disciplinary action hindi ang nangyayari redeployment to other places or demotion which I believe yan hindi lang sa batas ng NPA even sa Geneva Conventions IHL etc tayo uh, NPA is claiming to be compliant to to this international humanitarian law to this Geneva Convention however yung ka, kami din pala sa lagay kan kami din pala yung parang nagco-cover up dun sa mga violations so napagtanto ko Mr. Chair na these are all deceptions na yung mga sinasabi namin sa propaganda sa social media sa sa, sa media etc ano lang to ano lang pala to pagpapanggap na yung NPA ay mga hukbo ng mga mga mahihirap yung NPA hukbo ng magsasaka pero hindi ito ay isang ano lang um Huk- uh, NPA na walang prinsipyo, NPA na nangahasik lang talaga ng legim for the sake of of overthrowing the government. And that's a thing I can't accept. Bilang ako, I entered initially the organization as an LFS member, believing that this is an organization that advocates for social change, an organization that advocates for uh, for government empowerment, etc. Pero hindi eh. Um, kahit na sa mga rally sinasabi ng ano sinasabi na um, namin na yung mga pulis daw yung nag, nag, nag initiate para magkaroon ng mga riot etc pero hindi I, I was able to join Mr. Chair uh, a rally uh, in US Embassy I believe sometimes in 2011 kami talaga yung nagdadala ng mga pu- ng mga cellophane mga plastic makabalot na mga tae nakabalot na mga panis na mga pintura at kami talaga yung na-observe ko talaga na sa hanay namin na anak bayan at LFS, kami yung nag initiate para mag-create ng riot sa mga kilos protest. And that's a thing na, tingin ko naman na hindi naman necessary dapat na ganun dumating sa, kasi may nakulong na mga kasama, may mga nasaktan, nasugatan, iba mga nasagasaan. At it's ano na parang labas na siya dun sa ano yung gusto kong mangyari. That's, ito yung dahilan, Mr. Chair, bakit ako nag-decide na umalis sa kilusan? Ba't ako nag-decide na sumuporta sa government? Kasi, I realize, Mr. Chair, na hindi, pala, hindi naman dapat dahas yung paraan para makamit ng mga mamamayan na mga mahihirap kung ano yung mga advocacies, ano yung mga demands ng, ng mamamayan. Kundi, um, the government is always there to listen. I, I was able to observe that when uh, after i left the organization nakita ko yung ano nakita ko yung sincerity ng government to reach out to people who are vulnerable to exploitation and infiltration ng ng CPP and PNDF Mr. Chair hindi ba mahirap umalis hindi delikado ano yung uh, risk ng pagtiwalag mo ganun ka simple lang nabasat uh, nag-awol ka tapos nawala ka na lang sa 
sa kalusa ninyo? Actually, Mr. Chair, uh, after I left, uh, I, I, hindi pa talaga totally na umalis sa organization. Umalis na ako sa NPA unit kung saan ako nanggaling. Uh, Siyempre, balot po ako ng takot ng time na yun kasi it's my first time na umalis. Uh, unilateral yung decision na yun na basta ka lang alis, lilipat ka na lang ng ibang assignment. Alis ka sa NPA, magiging uh, political uh, organizer o uh, assignment mo, sarili, walang, wala kayong patakaran tungkol dito? Actually, Mr. Chair, meron talagang patakaran sa hingil dyan. That's why what I did was outside and beyond the policies of the party. Um, paglabas ko, uh, kasi I was uh, operating as an NPA leader in uh, in Compostela Valley and in Lava Or... Tatanungin ko siya na, sana po sino yung uno mong kinontak sa gobyerno? Official ba siya? Sundalo o kawani ng pamalaan? At paano ginawa mo? I'd, I'd like to find that out simply because there might be others no, similarly situated yeah, na ayaw, gusto na umalis pero hindi alam kung paano. Yes, Kairik. While waiting for the next... Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, kapag ikaw ay nag-prank ka sa CTP, NPA, NDF na alis, may kapapahintulutan. Kakausapin ka muna kapag sa NPA ang kakausap sa iyo political officer. The function of the political officer or political instructor is moral booster. Kausapin ka, na huwag ka maglaylo, baka na problema ka lang. Hindi ka talaga papayagan. And then you will be, kung insistent ka, you will be put into camp confinement sa headquarters. Then you will be observed. And then, pero pag mag-insist ka talaga na hindi na ma ma mapigilan, sasabihan ka, sige, bumalik ka sa open organization at tumulong ka pa rin. The same way that happened to the sister of Angel Luxi, Ella Colmenares. General Parladi was not lying. Ella Colmenares, the sister of Angel Luxi, was an NPA in Quezon. Ko siya personally. According to Congressman Colmenares, hindi raw kapatid. Uh, pamangkin uh, actually ni Miss Angel Luxi si Ella. Si, si Neri ang pamangkin, sir. Si Neri anyway, Colmenares. Anyway, anyway uh, si Ella Colmenares, sir, ay umalis yan. Hindi niya mapipigilan. So, Bumalik siya sa open mass movement. Pero CPP pa rin siya. And she's operating underground. At uh, ngayon, ang alam ko, nasa Makibaka siya sa Gabriela. So, nangyayari yan. Pero kapag umalis ka, kapag ginawa mo ang ginawa namin, sir, facing the government and the people and telling the government everything that we know, kaya umiiyak ka nila. Then you'll be marked. Papatayin kami. We, are we dead man walking, sir? Yes. Ang wife ko ngayon, sir, inaharas sa Iloilo City. Pero it seems na yung pagtiwalag ninyo, hindi ganun ka-risky. Para exactly. madali lang kayo nakalabas, eh. Uh, like si Kaamihan. Tumakas kasi siya, sir, sa loob. Uh, I, I think uh, pwede siyang magsalita tungkol doon. Hinabol pa siya sa labas. Ganon din sa akin, okay. sir. Nang magtago ako sa Tagaytay, nang bumalik ako sa Iloilo City after I talked to Secretary Raul Gonzalez, nang buhay pa siya noon. Hinabol pa ako at pinareport sa region, sa headquarters ng region, sa Igbaras, sa minimension niya. And I was made there to stay three months. Pag-isipan mo, Eric, dito ka na kumilos muli sa Panay. Hindi naman nila alam na nag-NPA ka. And now they're denying na NPA ako. So sabi ko, sige, pag-isipan ko. So the process of recruitment, sir, ang, ang pag ay, ay uh, mabilis. Pero yung pag-alis mo, napakahirap. Kapag talagang aalis ka, mag -aawul, like nag-aawal ako, sir. So pag-aawal ko, sinabihan ako na pwede ka ba mag-infiltrate sa city government so that we can have a base for the government employees more than 4,000 sa city hall. And to move forward, Yun pong rason, sir. Hindi na po ako magtatago sa inyo. The best way out is to contact first, to have a contact person first who would take care of you once you're out, di ba? Agree, agree po ako, Mr. Chair. That, that should be. Pero, sir, dahil sa matagal na panahon kaming pinaniwala na hindi mapagkatiwalaan ng gobyerno, papatayin kami, nag-aarangan kami. Ang nangyari sa akin, sir, I have a personal friendship with Secretary Raul Gonzalez. He was part then of the core group for the era of resign movement and pariyo kaming ilonggo I was able to penetrate in fact sir maglalahad na ako sir confession time na naman ito when I was with the NPA National Operational Command when Secretary Raul Gonzalez ito nakikinig lahat was DOG Secretary our backstop ID ay WPP Witness Protection Program pero NPA National Operational Command kami saan ko pa kinuha sa loob ng Padre Paura Pero sa isang undersecretary niya, nandiyan din siya. 
So, ganun kalalim po mag-infiltrate ang CPP. Hindi ko to sinabi noon, nakuha na rito sa akin. When I go to the airport, ang ID ko WPP. So, hindi alam ni Secretary Raul Gonzalez na ini-infiltrate nyo pala yung DOJ? Alam niya na NPA ako. Yeah, alam, alam niya dati ka NPA kasi sa kanya ka nag-seek ng sanctuary. Eh, Pero eh. hindi niya alam na infiltrator ka pala ng DOJ at the time. That was ang cover mo is nasa WPP ka. And, NPA talaga kami, sir. Pero that was 2006, eh. 2007. At the time, you were not yet cooperative yeah. sa government. Hindi pa po ako cooperative sa government. We were using the DOJ access yeah. because my personal friendship to Secretary Gonzalez then to get backstop ID and access to the programs of WPP to cover our operations. We were NPA kami. That's, bakit ko sinasabi ito? Kasi ganun po kami kalalim, sir, mag-infiltrate, magkukunwari, manyin lang, manloko ng mga tao. Even the government maluloko namin. What's the logic of that? Ganun po ang panuloko sa Congress. When Amihan, Noel, and me, and the rest, hundreds of us now, telling the, Cong the Senate, right before you, Mr. Chair, Mr. and the, the people, Mr. Senate President, na kami manuloko, totoo yun. Saan ka nakakita sa Pilipinas lang na ang Congress natin, may party group ang Communist Party sa loob. May sweldo pa at may pundo na 68 million per, per year each one of them. And then ngayon, hindi sila haharap dito sa amin para magkonfrontahan dahil iniiwas nila ang isyo dahil hindi lang daw sa korte. Sa korte, iba ang rules of evidence. Dito sa Senate, as a public opinion, ito ang tamang korte pertaining to this kind of modus operandi. And we're thankful for this opportunity. Not only for you, Senator uh, Ping and uh, Senate President, but this is for the people. Na, lantara na ito. Uh, hindi ko na po sasabihin ang ibang infiltration operations namin. Uh, precisely po, kasi baka makalimutan po ninyo bakit ko nagagawa ko yon. I was part of the N2, of the NPA National Operational Command. My work is to infiltrate... Ito ng Philippine Navy? No. Uh, marami pa kaming ginawa na nanggagaling sa inyo po mismo. N2 is intelligence unit ng NPA. The NPA has N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, hanggang N6. N2 is intelligence. Intelligence unit ng NPA. Kaya, Pareho rin ng military. N1 is personnel. N1 is personnel and training. N3 is uh, operations. SOG. Yun ang dalawang tatlong dati na naka full time na... So ginagaya yung armed forces. Yung yun structure. Yun ang tumira sa kay Quintanar N3 yun. Ready na ba si... Sino may sunod? Si... Ay, si sir. Si ano sir? Uh, si... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Diyan per lahat. Mr. Chair, gusto kong balikan. No, I'd like to reiterate. Ano? It is unfortunate that those that we invited from the militant groups are not here. Kasi una dito sila, mas malaya yung talakaya natin and they are here to rebut, to disagree, 